Hi there and welcome to another episode of Tech File right here on KTN News where we speak all things technology. My name is Brian Jodotieno, KTN's in-house techie. I dare say that, I dare say that. <laughs> I have a lot lined up for you, by the way. Um, now, right now you'll be able to add up to 512 people on WhatsApp, but you shouldn't worry if you haven't seen that adjustment just being made to your WhatsApp application just yet. This and so much more on this episode of Tech File. So let's get it rolling with the tech news of the week. WhatsApp will now allow users to have more than 256 members in one WhatsApp group, Meta, its parent company, announced. According to WhatsApp, you'll now be able to have up to 512 members in one WhatsApp group. With this move, WhatsApp will be becoming a bit more like Telegram, which is still ahead with user capacity of up to 100,000 people in one group. Another new feature will be the ability to increase the shareable files up to 2 GB from the current capacity of 100 MB. WhatsApp says the feature is slowly being rolled out, so don't worry if you do not have it just yet. Now, majority of cryptocurrencies market tumbled on Monday with Bitcoin falling up to 30,500 US dollars, a figure that is less than a half of its all-time high of 68,990 US dollars. According to blockchain analyst, 40% of Bitcoin holders are currently at a loss. But it's not only unique to Bitcoin, as the other currencies are also plunging in prices. Ethereum, for example, has dipped by 10% over 24 hours, and even stablecoin Terra UST fell below one US dollar. Elon Musk's favorite crypto Dogecoin equally saw a dip to 0.11 US dollars. Have you seen a location notification of your Facebook friends around your current location? Well, you may not be getting these notifications anymore as Facebook is reconsidering some of its services it offers. Facebook is shutting down its podcast service on June 3rd, barely a year after its launch. The social media giant told TechFile that it's also going to discontinue its short-form audio soundbites feature and its audio hub in the coming weeks. Facebook will also integrate its live audio rooms offering, which is its Clubhouse clone, into its Facebook Live experience. The company says this integration will allow for a more streamlined experience so that users will have the option to go live with audio and video only or audio only. The World Economic Forum announced 100 new startups joining the technology pioneers community. The 2022 tech pioneers are a group of 100 early to growth stage firms that think will shape the future. Three of the 2022 technology pioneers are from Kenya. The three startups are Access Afia, High Quality Healthcare for the Global Mass Market, Pula Advisors, an insurance and technology company providing comprehensive insurance solutions, and Sendi, building fulfillment infrastructure for e-commerce and consumer brands. This year's companies will join a group of alumni companies such as Airbnb, Google, Kickstarter, Spotify, and more. The 2022 cohort will also be invited to participate in the World Economic Forum workshops, events, and high-level discussions throughout their two years in the tech pioneer community. Lastly, the Kenya Revenue Authority KRA is setting up an advanced forensic lab that will allow it to mine data, including hidden accounts and records from taxpayers, computers, and mobile phones to detect tax and financial fraud. The move by the taxman's newly formed intelligence management division comes amid a strong shift to online transactions and electronic record-keeping businesses as opposed to the traditional paper-based accounting systems. KRS say the digital lab will target forensics acquisition extraction and discovery of electronic evidence and there you are now you are up to speed with what's happening in the technology world now i had a discussion with maureen Baker, the ictcas on what the government is doing with girls in matters of technology and training people in gaining skill sets around tech and this is what we talked about now the government is currently rolling out a program on girls in technology a program that targets school girls with high tech skills in a bid to increase tech knowledge in the country we spoke to ict ministry chief administrative secretary maureen barker and here then are the ins and outs of our discussion the girls in ict kenya initiative is really about empowering young women and uh, young women and girls to actively pursue careers in ICT and STEM. 
Of course, this is in realization of the fact that globally, only 30% of the ICT workforce is made up of women. So there is a disparity, there is a gender digital divide in that space. And um, so this program aims to close this gap um, and also aims to also, you know, create awareness uh, to young women and girls of the various ICT programs in place by the government of Kenya to just uh, you know encourage them to take up spaces in the ICT area. Right. The program really stemmed from um, observing Girls in ICT Day, which is a day that is observed annually around the world, uh, really to again create awareness around the gender digital divide and to um, you know encourage young women and girls to take up space in the ICT and STEM areas. Uh, um, so this day is um, spearheaded by the ITU, which is the International Telecommunications Union, which is the UN agency specialized for ICT. So they encourage uh, various bodies around the world to observe this day on the fourth Thursday every, of every April, um, yeah, to just create that awareness. Um, so we decided, other than just having that one day, let's have various programs leading up to the day. So as the, under the Girls in ICT initiative, we do have various programs. We do aim to have them monthly uh, leading up to April. Yes, so this is a program that we began actually in uh, September 2021, though we had been um, uh, observing Girls in ICT Day every year um, since as early as 2020. Um, so with the initiative, we came up with this idea of having various programs leading up to April. So as I stated, we do have various initiatives or programs under the, pro under the initiative. Um, so far, we've had an online blo blogging challenge where we invited young girls Come, come and give us, um, you know, submit your blogs. We have this expert uh, blogger who knows how to use um, online tools to create content. So we had um, these girls, invited them to submit their blogs. Um, they were reviewed. They, they got some um, feedback from this expert. Um, and then we also, you know, chose the 15 best um, uh, blogs and, you know, recognized them. So at, at that time, we had around 60 girls submitting their blogs. Um, so that was one of the activities we've had under the program. We've also had a cloud computing training where we we brought on uh, you know Huawei women in tech they came on board as a partner and um, we were able to train young women and girls on basic cloud computing skills you know this being um, a very you know big type of technology that is really defining the fourth industrial revolution it's being used across the world so um, but there is a the skills gap in this area so we, we saw it fit to you know train some of the girls on this so we did have girls coming on board, signing up um, uh, for, the, for the training. Um, we had them come and uh, even get certification at the very end. So we've had, uh, you know, kind of picking along uh, a few, number, few numbers of girls. And uh, cumulatively so far, with our uh, around three programs that we've had, we've, we have uh, been able to reach around 300 girls uh, so far, of course, looking to scale this up. For now, um, we, when we reach out to girls, they come with an open mind. Let's say that. They come with an open mind. Um, you know, what, what opportunities are there in the digital space? So we are looking at which areas um, can we focus on. Um, I've talked about cloud computing. Um, we are soon going to have a cyber security training um, so we are looking at various areas that are really top of mind uh, when it comes to you know uh, tech and which opportunities are growing right now in tech and there are quite a few so we'll continue to offer these uh, various digital skills to girls um, even as we move forward so far we've had uh, our programs online so really the beauty of having programs online is that it's open to everybody yeah, yeah. so all you need to do is yes sign up um, attend the webinar and the program is fully web uh, is fully online so you can um, you can sign up from all over the country really that's the that's what the our beauty. program yes that's the beauty of online um, and that's the beauty of uh, uh, I mean yes having um, programs online we reach out to the whole country really uh -huh. they are all welcome to sign up for these programs um, as I stated the program aims to empower young women and girls um, and to encourage them to pursue careers in this area 
So we are looking at girls who are at the, at the moment of choosing their career paths. Okay. So these are girls in high school, these are girls in university mm -hmm. who you know, can choose that yeah, I do want to get into the STEM field or the ICT field. Mm -hmm. So that would be the age between maybe 17 and 24. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the girls that we aim to reach with this initiative. This program is, has, as I've stated, just started in uh, September. So we've been uh, you know, having that open call to young women and girls all over. Um, and being an online program, you know, so we've been hoping that they could be, you know, just get online using their phone, using the few bundles on the phone uh, and log into the program. Uh, as you've stated, you stated that we'll talk about infrastructure in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and as I stated as well, that the program seeks to uh, raise awareness on other programs that the government has in place for the youth and ICT in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We do have the Ajira Digital Program that aims to, you know, um, you know, let young people know about the world of online work. Mm -hmm. And under the program, we actually have infrastructure known as Ajira Youth Empowerment Centers. Mm -hmm. These centers are actually aimed at the young people uh, across the country, not just in urban areas, mm -hmm. but across the country. And they are uh, equipped, these centers are equipped with uh, internet and digital devices. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the uh, programs that a young person can access through these um, uh, centers, you know, because we offer free internet we offer free digital devices mainly for the Ajira program so that they can learn, um, get the free training on how to work online, mm -hmm. get mentorship on how to work online. Mm -hmm. And I mean, since it's free internet and free devices, of course, they can um, use it to access our programs and our trainings that we have under the Girls in ICT initiative. Mm -hmm. We've just started in September. And of course, I believe we'll be able to reach more young people um, um, through shows like yours, I believe. Uh, you know, I, I hope more young girls can learn about the, this program, this initiative, mm -hmm. because uh, really it's it's a free program they just come online they get a chance to interact with women who are established in the ICT sector mm -hmm. they get to uh, you know have some kind of mentorship mm -hmm. um, so ju just that reach I think um, just to reach more young women and girls I think that's one area that we are really looking at okay. what I can uh, speak of is really um, perhaps the cloud computing uh, training where we had so many girls you know come on board and learn about this um, you know these services what are cloud computing services, which opportunities are there online. Um, and then in the end, we, you know, we gave them the option of you know, those who really want to focus on this area, come and do this exam and get this certification. Mm -hmm. Then um, you know, out of a large number of girls, we had at least 30 coming up and you know, taking the initiative to do the, the tests, to study, and actually get certification. I think that would be one of the, you know, one of the success factors that we can say that we have, we have some girls who we carried from the beginning, and now they are. 30 of them who came and actually now hold a certificate mm -hmm. in cloud computing. Mm -hmm. We are having a cyber security uh, yes. webinar, oh. a webinar on cyber security where we'll have young girls, you know, connect with the women professionals in, s in the cyber security space. Mm -hmm. um, so we have sent out invites online for people to register for the webinar. So of mm -hmm. course, girls are um, encouraged to sign up for that webinar. Mm -hmm. So what I can say is that monthly, we aim to monthly have programs around this initiative. So um, what girls can do is um, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, mm -hmm. follow me on Facebook, uh, follow <laughs> Konza, uh, one of the key partners in this initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes, Konza Technopolis. Mm -hmm. uh, follow their, their, their Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. And you'll get this um, monthly alerts that okay. you know the program is happening now. You can sign up. It's completely free. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is sign up and attend the webinar and you'll be able to interact with these women in these uh, spaces. You'll be able to ask questions and learn more about you know, various opportunities in the tech space. Very well then. Now after that discussion, we have a bit of conversation on the cryptocurrency and just still trying to pass a lot of information out there on what you should know about crypto. And then this is now that bit of that conversation that we had with crypto experts. You get the spot prices and also we have got derivative products as well. Uh, which means which is more for institutional buyers and sellers. Uh, but the role of a crypto exchange is pretty simple. A, to help you buy crypto assets which are launching in the market. Uh, there are some stable coins and there are some traditional crypto assets. So stable coin is something like USDT, which is pegged to dollar, or USDC, which is pegged to dollar. Then you have got Bitcoin and Ethereum, etc., like Litecoin. So these are traditional crypto assets and were the first ones in the market. Uh, then you've got altcoins, and these altcoins are the coins which are built on an ecosystem, 
which was, say, for example, Ethereum built the ERC20 ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the other tokens which are built up, those are additional altcoins. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a concept. The users can come to us, uh, open an account. They do the basic KYC by uploading their IDs, etc. And they get access to the platform. They get access to the wallets. Wallets is a place where you store your crypto assets. So once they have the wallets, mm -hmm. if they don't have crypto assets, the user can use their debit card or credit card. Mm -hmm. I always suggest use a debit card because credit cards are more expensive mm -hmm. to buy crypto assets. Mm -hmm. and you do your KYC mm -hmm. and put your card details and buy the crypto assets directly into your wallet. Mm -hmm. And once you have, you can trade. Mm -hmm. You can be a short-term investor or a long-term investor. Mm -hmm. Generally, traders are short-term investors mm -hmm. and long-term investors are people who are called in the crypto terms as hodlers. Mm -hmm. We provide a safe, secure, and a transparent platform mm -hmm. where the users can come in, mm -hmm. buy and sell crypto assets. Mm -hmm. The first actual use case of Bitcoin I, I saw was in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I always kept telling people uh, what we are doing, I would not name countries, mm -hmm. just in case if it has to create any controversies. Mm -hmm. But what we are doing there is actually pure speculation. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the African continent, that's the continent mm -hmm. where there is a real use case of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, having coming from the uh, payments background, mm -hmm. I saw the success of M-Pesa. I think they started in 2008 or 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about uh, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Eight, they started. Yeah. There was a case study that I read about M-Pesa in 2011 mm -hmm. and how big they became. And then the other African countries actually took away the M-Pesa model and ended up implementing. And today, actually, if you see, every every nation in Africa runs on mobile wallet. I mean, most of the re nations in Africa yeah. runs on mobile wallet. Mm -hmm. So that shows that uh, uh, the, the region is ready to adapt technology, mm -hmm. uh, which actually solves the problem. Mm -hmm. And crypto really is a beautiful tool. Mm -hmm. If it's used in the right way, mm -hmm. it can transform the world. Mm -hmm. And um, look at the... Uh, the crypto adoption in the African region. Mm -hmm. uh, it's most of the countries within Africa actually makes it to top 15 in the world, mm -hmm. uh, which itself is, is a great compliment for the region as such. However, mm -hmm. I personally feel that, uh, the fo the, that the people in this region should focus on education. Mm -hmm. They should focus on building the ecosystem as well, mm -hmm. being a part of an ecosystem that is supporting. Mm -hmm. Like Cardano is playing a very, very important role in the region. Mm -hmm. Um, if somebody can catch up to speed, uh, Africa can become a very, very serious nation, a serious region in terms of crypto adoption, mm -hmm. crypto investments, mm -hmm. and it can attract the best of the talent within the region. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, but I keep a lot of media about negative media about cryptos. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that there are not bad things happening in the crypto world, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there is some wonderful step, uh, wonderful things happening in the crypto world. Mm -hmm. It's about how you use it. Mm -hmm. So there are tools available. Mm -hmm. There are, so we shouldn't forget, I keep telling people, we shouldn't forget the basics. Mm -hmm. And what is the basics? Mm -hmm. A good house, in-house compliance mm -hmm. is very, very important, which is just like traditional finance. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating the idea that the countries don't need central banks. The mm -hmm. countries don't need regulations. I'm saying um, if cryptos has to develop further, we need regulations, mm -hmm. we need regulators, we need a central bank. Mm -hmm. So basically a centralized and decentralized system together, mm -hmm. and in my definition I call them CD5 or mm -hmm. CD systems, which is centralized and decentralized. Mm -hmm. Technology, blockchain combined with compliance mm -hmm. is, is a beautiful ecosystem that can be built. Okay. However, um, the there are tools as I was saying, mm -hmm. so if you have like coin monitoring is a very important concept that the crypto companies must follow, mm -hmm. which means they should find the source of the coins, source of the wallets, and make sure that they are dealing and providing their customers clean tokens to deal with. Every market has um, has has its own time. Mm -hmm. So you get into a bear market or a bull market. Yeah. Depend what is it that you're looking forward to crypto assets. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a financial advice. But if anybody has to ask me what crypto assets do I buy, I always tell them, invest 10% of your savings, the money that you can lose if you have to think like in that terms. I never think about losing because um, I've, I've bought Bitcoin at different price intervals and I'm not uh, sad even if I bought it at over $50,000 because I feel that it's an asset that I purchased for myself, for my family. Um, so I, I suggest users do not invest 
their life savings into crypto assets, invest smaller amounts into it, and invest. Don't think about becoming rich overnight. Mm -hmm. Think about adding value. I mean, do you buy and sell property is, is something I keep asking users. Do you buy and sell property every day? No. Just because of value has gone up? No. So start, think about, start to think about crypto like bitcoins as an asset. Mm -hmm. Think about it as an asset class that you have purchased something mm -hmm. and you're going to hold it for the next 10 years. Yes. Um, so once you have mastered this art, mm -hmm. I think you would not be worried about bear market or bull market. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you're a trader, mm -hmm. of course you may be a little worried. Very well, now you are up to speed with what's happening in your tech world. You know what the government is doing with empowering young children, particularly young girls with matters of technology and a bit of crypto update right there. And the tech news, wasn't it exciting? And of course that story on KRA will be keeping an eye on it to give you so much more value on the same. I am Brian Giorgetiano, that's why we end it right here on Tech File. Many thanks for your company. Next week we are at it again right here on Tech File, 8.30 p.m. every other Wednesday on KTN News. Remember to stay techy and enjoy the rest of your viewing.